and then hit post. Thirty more seconds. Ten seconds. Okay, so we have. Oh, we have people. Some people. Um. Some people said bold poster, glamorous looks, depth, three D, bold writing, three D. Pops out. That's two words. <laughs> bold art. Uh, five words. It. It like has a shadow, shadow, okay. All right, good. All right, so um, let's look at that word again, okay? This time I want you to look at this one and tell me, use one word to describe this typeface. Some people are using more than one word. <laughs> That's okay, you're like, I have to describe this. So we're getting 10 more seconds and then we'll talk about it. All right, so we got simple typewriter, normal letters, bold, squared, normal, big letter, bold, typewriter. It looks like the one T Mobile uses. Simple, simple, simple. All right, so here's the thing is that I showed you the same word, font and then font. And then, you know, it's the same word, but I use two different typefaces, okay? Now, some people came to the same conclusion and, and a lot of you actually didn't come to the same conclusion, right? Like not everyone used the same word to describe what they saw, okay? And we've already talked about this. So half of graphic design, and remember graphic design is visual communication, half of graphic design is typography. And um, so that's text, all right? And a big part of when you're putting in text or what's called copy in the graphic design world, because you're copying and pasting the text to your project, um, is deciding what font that you're gonna use, okay? And we see here, that one type has feeling, style, it makes people experience, have different experiences and that we're all not going to have the same experience with the same font. But we can kind of get close to a feeling and a style. So it's almost like what is your typeface saying just like your imagery? What is your imagery saying in your graphic design? So the word typography means, you know, we can see that type is in there but it's the design. So there are some people that own, they're typographers and all they do is design typefaces. Okay, so there are some typographers, like a lot of companies um, actually have um, typefaces created for their magazine, their company, and they're, then they're the only ones, you know, then they license that typeface and they're the only ones to use it because they wanna be that unique, okay? Um, then we have uh, graphic designers who arrange the type, okay? Like once it's made, how do you use it? Um, and then it's also the style and the appearance of type and that all is typography. So um, I teach at TLC and then at the, at the end of like a college class, you get like a survey and it's anonymous. And then like, it's like, it takes a whole semester for me to get the results. But one kid was like, he was like, if typography is so important, then why haven't I ever heard of it? And it's like, you've experienced it before, right? Like you've seen posters and you've seen that type is used. You probably just have never heard of the word typography before, and maybe you have, okay? So let's just dive into it. And um, I want to ask you, you know, why do you think type matters? And I'm gonna give you three examples here, okay? 
So first I wanna show you, um, now these are prescription bottles from Target. And um, there was a graphic designer and her mother was on several different prescriptions. Well, her mother got confused about which pills were which, and she took the wrong ones at the wrong time, and it was like a lethal combination, and she almost died from taking the wrong pills and the wrong dosage, okay? And back in the day, all prescription bottles used to look the same, and then the type that was used, the actual type, was all the same size and all the same font, okay? Made it, making it really hard for people who have vision problems and who are older to actually see. So she actually got together with Target, um, this designer, you know, the daughter of this woman, um, and she redesigned the bottle. Um, she created a typeface to be used on prescriptions. She wanted hierarchy to be used in color coding so that this would not happen to anyone else and that her mother could more easily identify what pills she's using. Okay, another example of why type matters is um, if you're driving, and some of you guys are driving now, um, they actually redesigned the typeface that is used on all of the signage all over um, in America, our nation, okay? And so there is a uh, typeface that was specifically created so that when you're driving, you can do a Dane Cook and be like, okay, sign, I see what you say. And remember that this type has to be looked at when it's dark out, when it's raining, when it's sleeting, and at a fast speed. And so spacing and the legibility of this typeface had to be very important um, so that everybody could see it, you know, while they're driving. All right. And then I just wanted to show you, um, you know, a comparison. Uh, I gave kids the copy type and I said, okay, make a, just a one page layout of gold shoes. Okay. Using this type. And you can see two students picked different typefaces. Okay. And they got to pick their own, um, you know, uh, images too, but you can kind of tell that actually changed the overall look of it, but look at the huge difference between the style and what, you know, graphic design tells communicates to somebody by this combination of text and typefaces that you choose and the images that you choose when you're making a design. Okay. So take a second and I want you to collaborate on a board and tell me, does type matter? Can you remember a time where type affected your life positively? It helped you, or maybe it was negative. And maybe it was something that you came across and you're like, I don't understand this. And then I got lost or blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I'm gonna share mine uh, on here too. All right, so I'm gonna post my example first. And so when I first got to CLC, I was like completely lost, um, much bigger, even though, even though Round Lake is really hard to find, the high school is like really hard to navigate. Um, like <laughs> CLC is even worse. There's a lot of different sections and you can get lost easily. So one time um, type helped me positively was when I was at CLC, they have what's called wayfinding and they had really big signs in the hallway and then they had big numbers on the room and I just read, you know, uh, and they also had maps all over as well. And that helped me navigate all that text, helped me get, get to where I needed to be. Um, so some people said they just couldn't think of anything. Viviana said type matters in my English class. Uh, I wonder, are, are you talking about the typeface or just, you know, I'm wondering what she's saying about that. Um, hmm. 
Okay. Let me um, unpack what everybody's reading. Uh, someone said, I don't recall a moment, but I've noticed typography. I have noticed typography on store brands. Okay, good. So um, maybe just talking about this today will help you um, think, you know, about that. Uh, I don't remember a time specifically, but I feel like plain type can be less attractive than something that likes pops out at you. Okay, so yeah, does it attract the viewer um, first, right? First, you got to attract them before they actually will look at and read and investigate what you've designed. Um, one time I was driving and I couldn't find the street because I couldn't see the street sign. Okay, um, I was taking a test and the directions weren't in bold like they usually are. So I just didn't read them and I was confused during the whole test. Good. Uh, this isn't really like type, but many times in high school, it has been hard to read some teachers handwriting. So that matters because sometimes hand uh, fonts are actually created based on handwriting. Okay, so hopefully um, someone else mentioned, yeah, I see different typefaces and fonts in stores too. So some of you maybe just needed to think about this. Some of you right now just said, I didn't post yours because you just said, no, I can't think of anything. Um, maybe you haven't noticed. And that's what's really cool about my class is that I have kids who when they're leaving or I see them you know, uh, in another class or I, they come back from college and they visit me, they'll say, man, I cannot look at the world the same way again after having you. Because you'll look at imagery differently and you'll start noticing typefaces. And maybe that's just what needs to happen today is that you actually start thinking about type. You're gonna start like investigating it and looking at it in television, in um, you know short video clips that you're watching, um, in film, in titles, in posters, in billboards, in the clothes that you wear, you know, and maybe we'll actually do some more exercises about that. But I gotta continue because we have some. So this is just a short video about just kind of the introduction uh, of type. So you're gonna have to hit play on your iPad. Typography, it's everywhere.
All right, so that was a lot of information in very short time. All right, so let's unpack everything. And we're not even gonna talk about all of the things that she mentioned, but I thought it was such a great video that really explained a lot about thinking about typography. So um, first, I wanted to touch on what she talked about, how there's different groups of typefaces. So typefaces were created and they're continue to be created. And as they're created, they fall into these different groups and they all have their own kind of characteristics, okay? So here is the groups that we are going to group them in. Um, and let's go over each one of them, okay? Now, before I do that, I wanted to emphasize um, something. There's a whole book written by um, the author Beatrice Ward, who is a typographer. And this is when type was being made on like a letter press, okay? And um, that means that like blocks of letters were actually put into the machine and then like put through, we'll actually see um, a video of it a little bit later. Um, but her, like the emphasis of all this is if, if you walk away from anything, and this is why I put it at the beginning of the presentation, is that smooth reading is the goal, all right? You, your job is to visually communicate and half of the way that you can communicate is through type. And it's not just about like finding a fun, crazy font. It should reflect what you're trying to communicate and it should be also easy to read. Um, so it shouldn't be not how should it look, but what must it do? Um, so what do you want people to do once they get to land on a piece of graphic design um, is more important about you know exactly which typeface. So you should really be thinking about if somebody is thinking about the typeface and it's hard for them to read, then you're not doing your job as a graphic designer. And we'll touch on that again, okay? So the first one we had was uh, sans serif, okay? And that means that it didn't have any little extenders or feet. Um, and then we also had a group of serif and those do have extenders or feet, okay? And there's so many serif fonts out there that they actually have character, character groups of different kind of characteristics of the ending. So you can see everything like, there's some that have really thin serifs and fancy serifs and cursive serifs and there's all kinds of different serifs, okay? Uh, then we have what's called slab serifs and that is when they have a very thick stroke um, overall and it actually matches the horizontal thickness of the serif itself. Um, so that's why I put those little dots there so you can see that the, the thickness is the same overall in that kind of group of font. We also have script fonts that are based on hand, handwritten fonts, but I just wanted to note, note that um, uh, in our type poster project that script fonts are not allowed because uh, of this reason, okay? Um, so something that you'll learn is that when you're learning about typography is that there's tips for using types and one of the tips is do not capitalize script fonts. And why? Remember, we just talked about smooth reading and you cannot read well if fonts are capitalized, okay? Next, we have what are called monospace typefaces. And these were specifically created for the computer. And they all have the same width, all the letters. So, and they all have the same kind of pitch, the same angle. So to give you an example of that, here is a typeface that we would call a proportional typeface. And notice that the width of all the letters are different versus a monospace typeface. And notice that every single character has the same um, width, okay? And then we also have display. And um, these are, should, should only be used for um, headlines because they are highly decorative. And again, this type of typeface should not be used for your type poster. And the reason why is because display fonts don't have lowercase letters. And that's something you have to have in your poster is uppercase and lowercase letters. So um, I'll show you that in the video tomorrow about when you're looking at that, okay? So we just learned about the different type, uh, typeface categories. I want you guys to match the font to it's a category.
All right, so we still need a little bit more practice with that. That's cool. Okay, so I also wanted to talk about how typefaces are not created equally. Some typefaces are created by typographers in uh, like their own, their, like a facility creates the font and they get paid really well and they actually have typographers making fonts, okay? Then there's some typefaces that are made by kids in their basements, okay? And you can get on the internet and you can get access to all these different kinds of fonts, okay? Some are really poorly made by some kid in their basement. And then there's those ones that are being made by corporations and specifically by typefaces, okay? Now, um, some typefaces have what are called really large families, which means that you could pick out a typeface and you'll find that that typeface is, is, has offers, okay? In terms of like, oh, I can pick this font and it has condensed version, it has a light version, it has a regular version, it has an italic version, it has a bold version and a black version, okay? So then we would say that type has a very large family versus some guys make, you know, these typefaces in their basement and then they have a very small family and they don't even have that many options. There might not be lowercase letters or there might not be numbers or special characters even like within that, okay? So powerhouse fonts created by typographers generally have large families that have different, what we call weights. So light, regular, bold, you know, um, thicknesses. Uh, Wiss, so we might have like condensed, kind of like monospace versus wider, and then slopes. And what I mean by that is different kinds of italic. Um, so, you know, at an angle, all right? So you can get lots of free fonts online, but I just have to make you aware that some might not have these kind of families that you usually want to have when you're designing, okay? Um, so I totally went over how much time I thought it was gonna take for the activities. So we will continue learning about typography on Thursday. So I'm glad we actually had that time. Um, so like I just mentioned, some typefaces actually have not just letters, but a good typeface will also have numbers. It will also have punctuation and it'll also have what are called glyphs or icons or special characters, okay? And so we'll come back and we'll look at these um, classifications, but I did want to show you um, what we're gonna be making, okay? So this week, you're not designing your typeface poster. You're just gonna be gathering. Um, first, you're gonna be picking a font, and then you're gonna get the information about the font, okay? And notice that the type, the type poster will include the name. So Dodo was the name of this typeface. Notice you're gonna include the capital, um, the uppercase and the lowercase letters, and the numbers, and some information about the font, and then the designer. So in this, Dido was created by Fermin. And um, you're gonna design a poster, you know, around that information. So here are some student examples. So again, you're all gonna, you're gonna see the name of the font, uppercase, lowercase, um, the numbers and the glyphs or icons or special characters, everybody calls it something differently. And then you're designing a poster and then you're also having that informational paragraph. Okay, notice that all these are in black and white and I actually highly recommend that you start in black and white and gray. Um, and then we'll do, I've had students who do like more than one version and we'll see how much time we have in the next couple weeks about how many versions that you create. So these are all student examples um, of this project. Okay, and it will include all this information. I'll go over this on Thursday because I've talked too much. But you will find, if you just look up type posters or typography posters, you're gonna see hundreds and hundreds of examples um, of this. So I'll just go through this quickly. I got like 20 more slides. So you can see that I just grabbed these from the internet. And this is very, I had to do the same project when I was in graphic design school. Um, so it's very typical when you just start learning about typography is to think about typefaces and to investigate typefaces and their backgrounds. And so you can see that some of these are the same typeface. A lot of people like Futura, but you could see different, how many different layouts that you could have with this. Okay. 
So um, on Thursday, I have a couple of fun videos and then we'll talk a little bit. There's only a couple of slides that I skipped over. Um, and then we'll look at the examples again and then we'll talk about it, okay? Um, so tomorrow, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to where it says week nine and where it says student-led Nearpon presentation video. This is the Canva video that shows you how to find the typefaces and then how to research the font. And then what you'll do is after you pick your font and research it, then you'll create, you'll um, complete this Google Doc. And this Google Doc is due by Sunday at midnight. Okay, so that's the only thing due this week, not the entire type poster, just you picking a font and finding information about the font is the only thing that's gonna be due this week. Okay, I don't wanna take um, any more of your time. I don't wanna, lecture. I, I talk way too much, okay? Um, and then don't forget to do your weekly check-in. All right, so we will finish this, I, I'm gonna end the session right now, but we will finish this presentation um, on Thursday. There are just a couple of funny type, typography videos and a couple of slides that we'll have to go over. All right. Um, and then I'll check if you guys have any questions. Otherwise, I will see you guys on Thursday. So do we have any homework for Thursday? Or no? If you ask me a question, I didn't have my volume up. I just turned it up, so I'll have to ask you again. Oh, um, do we have any homework for Thursday? Uh, no. The so tomorrow's your async day, and you'll watch that um that video. Uh, here it's the Nearpod video, um, and then. You can get started on your type, but it's due by Sunday at midnight, so. Okay. Okay. I got a question. Yeah. The, the computer guy hasn't emailed me back. Okay. Yeah, he just said that it's been, uh, he did, he said that he emailed you, I think maybe that was Friday morning and he said that I think that's when he responded so he's just said um yeah that's the last I heard from him because I just forwarded it on your email about how you still didn't know what to do um so yeah I don't I don't know <laughs> so yeah I would definitely talk to him um and just wait you can email him again I mean you have his email all right, yeah, then. yeah, I'm sorry. It's like beyond, yeah, it's like a tech thing. All right, then. Have okay. a good day. You too. Bye, hon. Tuesday, what I wanted you to walk away with is that fonts have a language of their own, right? Like I showed you the same word fonts, but you guys all gave me different words to describe, like what the word, you know, what the word said to you. Um, and so we saw that they have, you know, styles. And so here we have some different um, fonts. You can actually see uh, a word like describing the font like casual or elegant or having authority or usually friend or friendly. Um, and then you see the name of the font below it. And then you also see like the category. Like remember we talked about the different groups of typefaces. So we had script, we have sans serif, um, monospace display um, and so we that's kind of like the big idea here right that like we are graphic designers we want to visually communicate and one way to do that is with imagery and the other way to do that is with typography type um, and typefaces and the choices that you make with type okay so we're gonna watch this little video you will have to hit play my thing isn't loading at all oh yeah, so if that happens, then uh, double click your home button, close everything, not so Zoom, <laughs> uh, and then um, reopen your pod and then put the code in again. So you guys will have to hit uh, play on your device to be able to see it. I'm sorry that you can't see it, but usually, you know, re entering works. That doesn't work. Yeah. 
it just said timeout. Well, I'm sorry. Jesse, the presentation is on the module. Um, we're watching the video called Font Conference from College Humor. It's kind of funny video about typography. Put it in the chat for you, Jesse. All right, so <laughs> that's my version of hopefully having you remember that fonts have dis different personalities and characteristics and visual, you know, elements, and they have a personality of them all their own. Um, and then, oh, I wanted to put the other slide right, right here. This one. So um, in the video, we saw that <laughs> I don't know if you guys knew, but the guy, you know, with the hospital gown on was supposed to be uh wingdings and he he didn't say any words that we recognized right he was just using um icons um punctuation special characters glyphs uh, to speak to us and um there's wingdings one two three also there's web dings um and those are fonts that are actually not letters there's no letters or numerals it's all made up of punctuation icons glyphs special characters um and those are officially called typeface forms, but special characters, glyphs, punctuation, icons, uh, graphics is what, you know, all those different words are really talking about those typeface uh, forms. So the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, some a fun fact about um, fonts. This was supposed to come after when we were talking about display fonts and how display fonts only have capital letters. And um, we call them uppercase and lowercase um, letters. But in typography, the real name for uppercase letters are majuscules, and the real name for lowercase numbers are called minuscules, but nobody calls them that. And probably nobody knows that that's what they're really supposed to be called. And um, the reason that they were nicknamed uppercase and lowercase is because these letters, these uh, letters were actually kept in an uppercase drawer and a lowercase drawer, and we still still use that today. So in um, graphic design school, when I was in school, I actually had to learn how to set type on a letterpress. And a letterpress is how they created graphic design before a computer was even made. Um, and I thought it'd be really interesting to show you guys this, um, but I also really like the professor and something he's gonna 
going to say is something like, you have to care about typography. And that's why he wants students to do the letterpress and, you know, the computer. Um, so we're going to watch the short little video about that. So you'll have to hit play on your computer, on your iPad, sorry. In a second, it looks like it's still loading. Mind glitched. All right, so I'm going to stop it there. Um, so I really just wanted to like point out some things about that. Like, so I had to do that and, um, and, and I was that kid that was like, man, I can do everything really easily on the computer. And I don't know why <laughs> you're like, oh, the type, you know, 
uh, the typesetting is just so hard. But I just hope you notice kind of like the letters in the drawers, you know, that I just mentioned. Also, they were using like strips of lead to actually put space between the letters and the lines of text. And we'll talk about that later in uh, when we're, do we're dealing with a lot of text to lay out. And um, also this idea of like, you know, it's just a tool. Like first we had the typesetter and then we had the type press and then now we have computers. And I'm still not convinced that we won't have, you know, uh, holograms in a few years and that we will completely be doing things different. So, you know, it might be in your lifetime, not mine, but um, we might change again how we interact with how we create things. Um, you know, now they're creating like wands and stuff to make things and like, are you just going to be grabbing at space and using your fingers um, and hands to create things or like fake digital pens in space instead of a computer? I don't really know, right? So that's good. what's going to be kind of interesting is that, you know, right now the computer is our tool, but it might continue to change. Um, so um, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, a little bit of history about type. And this is just, uh, I, it's not even that long. It's, it's, so it's really cool. I really like how it was made. It's made with uh, stop motion. And this will be the last movie that we watched today. But um, it's just about, you know, why do we have these letters? Like, why do we have A, B, C, D? Where does it come from? Like, you know, who came up with fonts? Why do we have so many different fonts? And so I think it's really under, uh, important to understand that. So here's a little brief intro about the history of type.
All right. I just love that. Like, so we learned so much about typography in that. Um, and mostly what I wanted to point out was that, you know, throughout history, there was kind of like groups of fonts that had similar characteristics coming out at the same time. Um, and even the newer fonts that come out now could still be categorized into these classifications that all have the same um, characteristics. And I've kind of gone through different uh, things throughout my life. Like when I first became a graphic design student, I really liked Franklin Gothic, which is a grotesque font um, and lots of the Gothic ones. And then I started really liking Gil Sands, um, which was more of a humanistic. Um, and now like some of my favorite ones are Lato. So I've gone through like different uh, phases throughout my life of like favoring certain fonts and whatnot. Um, and some people think of these, you know, humanistic, old style, modern, um, some of them think that they're boring, but sometimes we do need neutral fonts and like a large amount of text. And then we use something like a calligraphic, like formal, decorative, um, black letter to create kind of this overall style using the header, which is just not a lot of type, okay? So just note that you can actually group them. All right, so we looked at the student examples on Tuesday. And so this is really what I want you to notice that a lot of them are in black and white and gray because I tell students you should really start like that um, because we're really actually focusing on the hierarchy and what the texts say. So I really suggest that your first one is actually just black, white, and gray, your first version. Um, and then I had students do two more versions where they kind of moved everything around and they, then they started adding um, in color, okay? So in your poster, you need to have the name of the typeface, who created it. It could be the founder. It could be a foundry if it was a group of people or creator. So where did the word, uh, where, and again, foundry is where the word font comes from, the group of people that created it. The year it was created, uppercase, lowercase, majuscule, minuscule. The numbers, um, forms, glyphs, special characters. Okay, so you could just use just these um, ones or some people decide to add more, it's up to you. And then um, a small paragraph about the font. And again, you can copy and paste that from the internet. So um, in, you should have watched that asynchronous video yesterday that showed you how to um, find your font. Um, Cause you have to go to Canva, right? And you have to find out what fonts are available and then you can find out you know, uh, which ones are display. So if you see uh, uh, uppercase only, that's a display font, you can't use it, right? Because then you can't use uh, lowercase. Um, also, I told you to stay away from script fonts because you can't capitalize script fonts without it, without it being illegible. So you can use any sans serif, serif, monospace, slab serif fonts that have the uppercase and lowercase. Okay. Um, it will be poster size. So at the beginning of that, the, the video yesterday, I said, make it 11 by 17. And someone's like, what was the point of making an 11 by 17 document? Well, you'll go back to that document and you'll add all this text. Um, you don't have to arrange it yet until next week, but you do need to do that Google Doc where you find all that information. Uh, next week, you'll learn about visual hierarchy. And then um, I, I highly suggest your first one is uh, value non-color, meaning it's just black, white, and a range of gray. Um, you can use a color scheme and then um, the following week I will make you pick a color scheme. Um, and then again, I'm just suggesting that you stick to sans serif or serif fonts. And then um, also I just want to make the suggestion next week that when we get to um, actually creating your, and you can start creating your type poster whenever, but think about how um, individual characters can be used uh, interestingly as shape, as almost imagery. So this is just enlarging cer certain characters um, and, and letter forms can actually, you know, be used uh, as visual imagery in your posters. And then just a reminder to care. So I'll be saying this a lot, but some people, I think a lot of people, I don't know, it's like weird. It's like, we'll make a poster and then students will get kind of messy or they'll like, or just like not finish it. And then they're like, well, it doesn't matter. It's not my job. And I'm like, well, no, you're the graphic designer. You're the one that, that lays out the type. And it is your job to check if it, the spelling's right. And you, it is your job to check the spacing and everything. So it's not just you know making imagery. We also have to care about the text because remember, that's the second half of communicating with people. And then I had a bunch of um, 
examples and you can see that you'll see a lot of the same fonts you you know like a lot of people love baskerville and uh the Bauhaus and um look at they're like the same ones over and over again you'll see a lot of helvetica and futura and there's a reason for that right because they're really good fonts and they're they become people's favorite fonts because they are really good fonts you can see how other people have already arranged this okay so the only thing due this week is if you went to our course and you went to week nine make sure you do the the, the check-in um make sure that you watch you were supposed to do yesterday you were supposed to do the student-led nearpod presentation video about finding your font and researching it and then you come to this next assignment that's what you're supposed to do yesterday where it says typography copy remember copy means that you would end up copying and pasting that text into your type poster so this is just the um google doc to organize your typeface the year blah 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 just make sure that you have all the information if you missed today's presentation or you had glitches, here it is right here. So you can watch those videos if it didn't work for you. And then also it was that enrichment. Um, so this is a way, if you do do this and you do do it well, this is a way that you can get a four um, in this, you know, A plus in this class by going above and beyond um, showing me your skills um, out there. And again, you can do it with phot photography, you could do it with Canva, you could do it with graphic design, you could do it with um, illustration. I know some people are like really into using um, different illustrative, you know, digital illustration apps to draw things and you, you could use that as well. Okay. So, and then just a reminder that you won't see me live next week. I'll be at that conference, but you'll have pre-recorded um, sessions for next week. All right. Thanks guys. Uh, thanks for letting me talk so much about my passion of typography. <laughs> It was really hard for me to condense it just to like two days. Um, but I hope you guys have a good weekend. Um, and I will see you in a couple weeks. <laughs> Live. Oh, let me turn up my um, volume if you have any questions too. I have a question. Yeah. So when I pick my font on Google Docs, like I already have mine. Okay. Do I just like write the information down on that and then put it into Canva? You don't need to put it into Canva yet, but yes, that's what you'll do next week is you'll take that same text and copy and paste it into Canva. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I got a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My Canva is working a little bit better. Oh, good. Yeah, I've been so like thinking like, about you and I'm like, oh my God, I feel so bad. But yeah, even today working. when it glitched, I almost wonder, I'm like, is this his, I'm like, it has to either be his iPad, does he need to bring his iPad in and they need to look at it or is it your internet bandwidth or something like that? Oh. Yeah, my Canva was working this morning, but the only problem is like every time I tap something, it just reloads. That's oh. the only problem. Okay. What about, and you've, and you've tried it on your phone mm -hmm. and same problems too. This is weird. Yeah. Um, I just got an email just now from Mr. McLaughlin. Let me see what it says. Uh, okay. Yeah. He really needs you to zoom with him so that he can, um, see the problem. All right. Okay. Yeah. He needs to like see your screen and see like how it's glitching and the problem so they can help you. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Awesome. Hey, Jesse, I'm sorry you've been having problems. Did you have any questions? No, I just, uh, I did the, uh, the comments on the other people's posting. Oh, okay. Good. I'll put it in the grade then right now. Okay. And also I submitted the, the three designs properly this time. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll go grade that too, since you mentioned it. Okay. Okay. Have, awesome. a, good Have a good weekend. You too. Bye. Hun.